Blessings one and all, and welcome to the Infinite Journey Podcast. I'm Paul James Caden, and today on the show, we are going to be asking the question, who's pulling the strings of your mind? And boy, I'll tell you, that's uh, that's a pretty big question to ask in this day and age, because we're all familiar with with these algorithms that they have on the internet. If you go on Google or some other search engine and you decide to look for a certain pair of shoes, suddenly that brand of shoes will pop up everywhere. On your Facebook, ads on your phone, emails from companies, all over the place across social media, wherever you go, That brand of shoes will haunt you. We're all very familiar with, you know, online, they're always collecting data. They have the algorithms, what we buy, the kind of things we watch, the kind of things we read. And if we're going to say news is biased, Uh, We're absolutely right on many accounts, but all news is biased. If I happen to believe something bad about a certain politician, and I read a lot of articles that support my bias, I'll suddenly get a a lot of articles coming my way on that subject. Just the way if I support a certain politician, I'll start getting a lot of articles, a lot of videos coming up on YouTube, things across social media that will support that bias. So really, all of us are getting one-sided information from the internet based on what our beliefs are, what our feelings are, the kind of information that we research and look at. So the wizard behind the curtain of the internet is definitely keeping tabs on what you and I do. And another interesting thing And I don't know if some of you have noticed it out there. Is that you'll always see conflicting and contradicting stories in the news media and online. Just as an example. In this current election in the United States, we have three different reports coming out of various news sources, and most of them being online. One says President Trump will never concede. They will have to drag him kicking and screaming out of the White House. Another one says Melania and Jared Kushner have approached Donald Trump and told him that maybe it would be best if he just conceded. And the third one is that Donald Trump himself said that he would concede under certain conditions. Now, I ask you, which one of those is the truth? And there's everything probably in between when you look at the news. If you're a staunch Republican, you will get all kind of articles and news and evidences about how evil and wicked the Democrats are. If you're a Democrat, a staunch Democrat, you'll get all kind of articles and information of how evil and wicked and crooked the Republicans are. And we'll all swear to the information that 
we've been given. Ours is the only truth. Everybody else is stupid. Everybody else is evil. Everybody else doesn't know what they're talking about. They're blind. They're lost. They're ignorant. But yet, all of us have been fed certain information to confirm our bias. And then there's the confusing, conflicting news stories, the articles, the reports. So let's ask why this might be happening. Well, to the best of my research and looking into this, you know, again, it's no secret, and, and most of us know that governments across the world, even our own government here in the United States, have always looked for ways to control and manipulate the masses. Control them in nudging them what to buy, what's popular, what's the new trend, how to vote, how to behave, even how to react to certain stimuli in the world, in their neighborhood, in the country, in their government. You know, when we hear people say, well, you know, they look at us like we're cattle, uh, they look at us like we're sheep, or people follow them like sheep, you know, that that's not a far off base image to come up with, because that's how certain people in government, in big industry, in advertising, that's how they see the mass populace here. We're not human beings. We're not people that they're giving a choice and saying, oh, you know, here we have item A, here we have item B, here, you know, here we have whatever they're presenting to us. They're always looking for ways to manipulate you and somehow fire off certain things in your brain that will make you, kind of nudge you and urge you to buy their products or to react in a certain way. I myself am a certified hypnotherapist, and the gentleman that I learned from um, is a hypnotist known uh, by the name of Wayne Perkins, and he's been around uh, since the 1970s when he began doing uh, hypnotherapy. So he's, he's well known, he's been around for a while, and uh, I, I took uh, an at-home course from him, and, uh, you know, in between the courses, you know, you would, you, you know, you could have phone calls with him, you know, talk about uh, how you were doing in the course, things you had questions about. And one day during our conversation, uh, you know, we were talking about the course, and then we just got talking, you know, just conversation. And uh, the conversation went in, in such a direction that we I don't even know how we got there, but we started talking about mind control and, you know, manipulating the masses and, and you know, telling them um, what to buy, how to react to certain things. And uh, now, now this guy's been around for a while, and he and he said his exact words. He says it's it's absolutely true. He said people would be surprised at how many people in the advertising industry, in government, and even um, ministers, particularly the the televangelists or high profile, you know television personality ministers that have a lot of people in their congregation or watching them on TV, he said, you would be surprised at how many people from these three groups take courses to find out the secrets of what is called waking hypnosis or auto-suggestion, how to word certain things that will influence or get a certain immediate reaction 
out of certain people in their sphere of influence. And he said, this is why uh, you'll see drug commercials, you know, call your doctor. It'll talk about certain uh, symptoms, you know, and there's a certain amount of people that will automatically say, gee, you know, I, I think I have that illness or I think I have that condition. I need to go buy that vitamin. I need to go buy that product. I need to go to my doctor and check into this medication. At that time, there was a big thing. Uh, it was all over the place. There, there were billboards. It was in magazines. And uh, I, I remember it was just a black background. And in big uh, white words, it said, asthma is on the rise. And, you know, he was talking about that. He said, look at the, you know, he asked me if I saw this new ad, asthma is on the rise. He said, that's very suggestive. He said, and it's everywhere. It's it's on TV. It's in magazines like Reader's Digest. It's, you know, on billboards. He said, how many people drive to and from work every day and pass one or two of those billboards? Asthma is on the rise. Asthma is on the rise. He said, it's it's like subconsciously programming them through the written word and there's a certain amount of people who eventually, you know, maybe I have asthma. I'm, I'm having a little trouble breathing here. And he talked about some of the um, the televangelists. And it was, it was kind of interesting once we had that conversation how much I noticed, you know, in things that we watch. And uh, I noticed in some of the, uh, the, conver- uh, the televangelists. Uh, when I was, you know, into evangelical uh, Christianity, the, the couple that I would watch, and they would have their product at the end of the show, and they would say, you need this. You know, you need this right now. You need to get a hold of this. This is vital information that you have to have. And that was waking hypnosis or auto-suggestion. Because there's maybe a... 55 to 60 percent you know uh, on the high level maybe more of the listening audience that as soon as they hear those words they'll pull out their credit card they'll pick up the phone and they'll order the product right away no hesitation they need it because so and so told me that i need it so this is the kind of thing um That that really has been going on behind the scenes in our country, in Russia, I mean other countries, controlling the mind, controlling the reaction, controlling the desires of the people. And this is why we have to be so careful. This is why we have to be so careful when it comes to things, and, and, and here I go, you know, again. But we have to be so careful with things like this election and choosing sides. Because, you know, what what's the what really is the end game here? I mean, most of us know that there's the global agenda. They want to, you know, there are certain parties, uh, certain people. You know, even in our government across the world, they want this, uh, what used to be called the New World Order, you know, the, the global alliance, one global banking system, you know, one currency, one one government, one little group of powerful people kind of controlling it all. And, you know, these people talk, and, 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 and this fits into what we're talking about, pushing those buttons controlling the reaction you know the a lot of these people and the paper trail is out there that the united states and israel have been the two biggest stumbling blocks for that happening because they're two countries that really value their sovereignty and i know here in america things that are happening uh you know in our in our country seem to be right out of that playbook and what are they You know, one of them is give them such bad leaders that they will cry and and plead for something else. Their leaders are so bad, so 
divisive. They get nothing done. They're running the country into the ground. What is another one? Destroy the value of the dollar. Look what COVID has done to our economy. In just a couple of months, it was devastated. Now, I'm not saying COVID is a a, a fake illness. I believe it's a real virus. Um, But was it allowed to, to take a certain toll? And this is why certain government officials knew about it in December, January, February, and they didn't do anything. They didn't tell anybody. They just sat on that information. Oh, well. You know, it's, it's so hard to tell. But, you know, what, what is another, uh, another play out of that, that handbook? Divide the people. Divide them politically, divide them racially, divide them on everything that you can because people that are divided are much more easy to control. Let's remember the words of Christ when he said, a house divided against itself will fall. And we'll be going for a mighty, uh, we'll be taking a mighty big fall if we don't correct the direction that we're going in. But in order to do these things, what do certain people have to do? They have to control the reaction of the individual. You're my enemy, I'm your enemy. You're the bad guy, I'm the good guy. They're bad, you're bad, I'm bad. We all have conflicting information that we swear is true. This is what happened. No, this is what really happened. It's almost like we're being gaslighted. And if you don't know what that is, um, watch the old movie. It's, it's called, uh, you know, Gaslight. And it's, it's a great movie about uh, a man, you know, he, he marries a woman. and he, he tries to drive his wife mad. Um, things that are there one minute he takes it and he hides it and he says it's never there what 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 are you talking about he he tries to feed to her you know all of this uh information convincing her that she's going mad she's deluded she doesn't know what's going on and basically it's you know gaslighting someone as have them question reality question their own sanity and i it's it's interesting to me because i mean there are a lot of people right now literally who question reality you know what is reality we don't even know anymore you know (laughs) according to some people but it's it's kind of an interesting dynamic how we all question one another's reality This is what I heard. What are you talking about? That's not real. That's not what happened. You're crazy. You're stupid. Are you following me with this? Because that's exactly what's happening. And again, using the election as um, an example, because it's, it's what's happening now in our world, we have people saying, Voter fraud. This happened. That happened. All these illegal mail-in ballots. Dead people voting. Republicans not allowed even to go in and watch the ballot count. Then we have people, and, and here's these conflicting stories again. Then we have news on the other side going, well, what are they talking about? There were no illegal mail-in ballots. Everybody knew that the legal ballots had a watermark on them this year, and everybody counting the votes looked for those watermarks to make sure they were real and legal ballots. Republicans and Democrats were both there observing and watching the vote count. There was no fighting. There was no turmoil. States across the country have said this has been the most peaceful, and unified counting of votes they've ever seen. 
And some news outlets and reporters say we've talked to all the, you know, Secretary of States, all the governors, all all the people, everybody saying there's there's no voter fraud. But then on the other side, we have all kind of other stories. No, this happened, that happened, this person said this. Which one is true? Now, that's that's going to be something that some people will jump right up and say, well, my side is true. You know, the people I support, I believe what they say, this is true. But now, wait a minute. Think about everything we just talked about. The gaslighting, the manipulating, the controlling people's behavior, the conflicting news stories. You get one thing, I get another. The next guy gets something else. Doesn't it kind of seem like we're all being manipulated to choose certain sides? And what would the purpose of that be? Are they trying to divide everybody so badly that this nation never heals? Are they trying to have everybody at everybody else's throats so it's much easier to move us into some global government system? Everybody's so out of control fighting over politics now. We're practically on the verge of civil war or having a civil war. And, you know, some entity's got to step in and say, that's it. We're no longer having this kind of government because the nation is tearing itself apart. This is what we're going to do now. It's possible that that's on the agenda of these folks who want that global entity. Now, all of this, of course, you know, it's it's part fact. It's part speculation based on what I know about the facts according, you know, to the agenda of these people that want the globalist um, government and society. But I don't think those speculations are, are so far off in the weeds that they become something uh, completely unbelievable. And this is why I always say we have to be careful. We have to follow our own intuition. We have to follow the voice of God in a more pure way. Because in my humble opinion, that voice and that guidance of God is the only thing that keeps us out of that mess, makes us see it for what it is, makes us realize that something's wrong there, and I'm not getting involved in all of that. I'm not going to enter into all of that because something isn't right. I believe with all my heart it is only the guidance and the leading of the Spirit of God that helps us stay away from some of those subtle manipulations. And I think also, and you know, a lot of people got mad at me when I said, hey, you know, these prophets failed, you know, these are failed prophecies, false prophets. You know, I had uh, a handful of people uh, after Monday show say, hey, you know, uh, that's it, I'm out, you know, <laughs> you've, you've crossed the line. And that's fine, but but hear me when I say this, that maybe... Maybe this is why we have such a play for people's spirituality as well. You know, maybe this religious people, Christians, all of their lives for 2,000 years have suspected that one day there will be uh, Babylon the Great that will rise, the harlot riding on the back of the beast. A mixture of political and religion 
philosophies that would be what many call the the end times uh, false religion. For 2,000 years we've known this, over 2,000 years. People have talked about it. The harlot riding on the beast. And now we have right here in America a mixture of a, a, a religious political system being built right in front of us and people are following it. People are defending it. People are hating and bad-mouthing others who stop and say, hey, wait a minute, guys. There's something wrong with that. And we should know better. We should know better. I told someone on social media lately, you know, just because something has a Christian label or, you know, the, the label of God slapped on it doesn't make it so. You know, there are false teachers. There are fake prophets. There are people that will manipulate others through religion. And we have to be very careful with this kind of thing. You know, the interesting thing to me when, when we talk about, you know, just on the physical, secular level of things, when we talk about people in politics and people in advertising and people in uh, religion, when we talk about all these people taking courses that want to learn about waking hypnosis, auto-suggestion, you know, speaking those words in a certain way that uh, a percentage of their audience will automatically just react without even thinking about it. You know, it's interesting to me when, when we go back and think about that and, and just, just for clarity purposes, we'll look at the politician and the religious leader. And Wayne Perkins told me you'd, people would be surprised how many people in government, religion, and advertising take these courses to try to learn uh, how to speak certain words that will make certain people, you know, react automatically. And now think about it. A lot of these preachers, televangelists, evangelicals, they've been hanging around and been good friends with politicians for years. Might it be that the two of them have the same agenda? If they're hanging out together, if they're best buds having a bromance, if the politician and the big religious leader are both taking courses and seeking ways and, you know, experimenting on different ways to control the masses, might their agenda be as one? Could it be the preacher, not all preachers, of course, but just those ones that hang around the politicians all the time, you know, multimillionaire uh, preachers hanging out with multimillionaire and billionaire politicians. If they're all hanging out together and they all are looking for ways to control the masses for a certain response, might they have the same agenda? Might this be why some of these religious leaders are pushing their followers to support certain politicians to just wholeheartedly join in this religious, political amalgamation cult that we're seeing rise out of our country right now? People don't like to think about that, and I'm sure there's some people that will hear that, and you know, I'll I'll get I'll I'll get some more, you know. I've had enough. That's it for me. But think about these things. 
Don't let your emotions control you. Because that's part of the manipulation. You know, if we go back, uh, there's a book out, and I forget who the author is. I, I think it was written back in the 1970s. And the uh, the name of the book is um, When Prophecy Fails. And this was written by a psychologist who, in the book, talks about all of the stages a person will go through when their belief system is challenged, even when they can plainly see that that belief system or that prophecy has failed them. So, in other words, somebody could say, I predict, uh, just using it again as an example, I predict uh, Donald Trump gets a landslide in 2020 and it doesn't happen. Well, the next thing would be, and we're seeing that happen, moving the goalpost. Uh, nope, he's going to win it in the courts in December. You know, he'll be declared president. Don't worry, he's going to win. Now, what if that doesn't happen? Then it becomes looking for the excuses. Well, it must have been the evil people thwarted God's plan. It must have been the devil. Uh, there, there must have been some kind of information, uh, you know, that I wasn't privy to, that, that God didn't give me. Uh, maybe this has a later, you know. Th there's all kind of games that we play with ourselves to justify why what we're hearing isn't true. And one part of that is anger. If someone comes along, no matter how good their intentions are, and they say, hey man, you know, I... I think you're being manipulated here. Maybe you better be careful. Right away, we, we, we react with emotion, anger. Get away from me. You're a liar. You're a sinner. You're of the devil. You're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. Something wrong with you. How dare you? I'm removing myself from your presence immediately. It's in the book. 1970s, the guy wrote the book about cognitive dissonance. So don't let your emotions get the better of you. People can agree to disagree, but look into what's happening and how it's affecting so many people. This isn't right, ladies and gentlemen. And it's not right that we're this divided. It's not right that we all have different stories about what's going on and swear to it as being the truth and the only truth. It's not right that some of us are being fed a diet of one thing and another group a diet of another. Something's not right with these algorithms and these behavior modification experiments that the government's always looking into, you know, how to control the minds and the reactions of the populace. Something is very wrong here. And I'll tell you something else that's very interesting to know. When we talk about an attack on spirituality, an attack on religion, an attack on people of faith. Did you know that a person of faith, largely those who, ha who say they have a personal connection with deity in their prayer life, in their worship life, in their meditation, however they connect, those people think more independently and more logically, reasonably balanced and intelligently than those who are not necessarily a person of faith. Now, I'm just saying what 
research has said in the past. There's something about that kind of spirituality and religious faith that makes a person a stronger thinker, more independent, and more critical. More of a critical thinker, a balanced thinker. So if that's true, wouldn't the people who have a certain agenda that want to make us all think a certain way would attack that, undermine that? Maybe maybe they can't just take it away and make it non-existence. I think, I think that they've tried to do that, and it didn't work. Religion and spirituality are still there. So what's the best second way to do that is to pollute the waters. Start manipulating the people through religion. And is it an interesting over... The last couple of uh, decades here, we've seen more and more. It started with uh, Rick Warren uh, when he wrote the book. Um, what was it? The um, uh, the Purpose Driven Life or, or whatever it was. I don't remember the title offhand. But there were a whole lot of preachers and pastors coming out that time saying, you're nothing without the church. You're like an organ separated from the body. You don't have any connection with God if, if you're not in a church or in the church. And that's still being spread far and wide in Christianity. You need the church. You need the body. An organ out on its own just withers and dies. You don't have any spiritual power. You don't have any spiritual connection. And little by little by little now, you know, they're pushing people into this spiritual, religious amalgamation. Crept into their minds. Through manipulation, under the guise of prophecy, scaring them once again. Oh, I thought I had a connection with God and I didn't go to church, but now I'm just an organ withering outside the body. I better get to church. And do you know how many people had that kind of reaction to that teaching? What better way to take that independence and that connection away from people than to poison it from within? Politicians and preachers all hanging out together, having a bromance. All of them multimillionaires and billionaires comes right full circle what I said in one of the other uh, podcasts. Isn't it inter interesting that Congress passed all this money to help businesses during the COVID shutdown? And many, many businesses and small businesses didn't get that money yet. But the government has it. But yet they saw fit in, you know, it was April or May, you know, when that money... Uh, was okayed, who got, I think it was something like $6 billion in relief money, you know, given to them. Mega church pastors. Hmm. Why did the politician see so fit to take care of the pastor that he hangs out with and smiles nicely at us from our TV set? Every weekday or every Sunday evening, whatever it might be. I mean, I think we need to connect some dots here and question some things. Because I think this manipulation, this pulling the strings of our mind, goes a lot deeper than we think it does. And when we choose sides and behave the way that we're behaving right now, We're playing right into someone's hands. And somebody sitting back with the big smile on their face saying, We did it. We're doing it. Look what the stupid sheep are doing. Look what the herd is doing. We're leading them by the nose and they don't even know it. It's time to take our minds back. It's time to take our thoughts back. Time to take our independence back. Time to take our unity back 
and we don't do that by following after men. We do that by coming together as people, as brothers and sisters, and following the voice of God in our lives. One-on-one connection. Personal experience with something greater than myself. It's time to cut the strings. No more puppet masters trying to manipulate the minds of the masses. As I said before in this podcast earlier, we all know this. We all know these things. So what are we doing? What are we doing? I'm Paul James Caden. I thank you for listening. I hope you got something out of this uh, show today. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I'll speak to you next time here on The Infinite Journey.